Hello, this is Julie from Love's Beginning. And um, I wanted to talk today about what we're valuing primarily. Is it the physical or is it the energetic? Because when we value the energetic primarily, it's the key to experiencing peace in, in this now moment. I may break this up into a part one and part two because um, I have some kids who will be waking up. So <laughs> we'll see how far I get this morning. Um, but it may be in two videos. So what I've been learning uh, lately is how much we are very absorbed and distracted by what we are making in the physical. I'm using the word making in the sense that A Course in Miracles uses that word. I find it a useful distinction. Um, a Course in Miracles talks about how we make illusion. We make all the components of our world that seem to uphold the idea that you must struggle, that my identity is separate from yours, that yours is superior or inferior to mine, that we have unequal access to the power that we all are, that we should blame somebody, that there's something we must urgently fix through effort on the physical level. Um, all this is very distracting and very absorbing. So that's what we're making and we're choosing for it, when we're experiencing it, whatever we're experiencing, it's an indicator of what we want. And we might think, well, I don't want this at all. There's a war in my world, or there are people around me who aren't getting along, but it's actually a helpful indicator of the extent to which you are absorbed second by second, minute by minute, day after day, in the physical, in this world that we make together. Um, then the distinction between making and creating is creating is when you're flowing with the divine will that is truly yours and everybody else's. Although it shows up in very interesting ways in, in differentiation, you know, it's never boring. Sometimes people are afraid of harmony because they think it will be boring. But when you, um, when you toggle over into harmony, you don't lose the differentiation. You don't lose the celebration. You don't lose the joy. So we'll just get that off the table right now. So when you're flowing in harmony, you're creating, it feels very good. We all know what those very pure, good, relaxed feelings feel like. Joy, harmony, peace. There's another set of feelings that feel good to us, but they're the opposite of what we're making in our world. So you might have happiness that's a relative happiness, like, I'm happy that you did what I wanted you to, so I'm happy with you and I'm not mad at you. Or I'm satisfied because I got this snack I really wanted, so I'm not bereft because I'm sitting here without my, my fix that I wanted in the afternoon. There's a certain energy of disturbance around that. So it's good to get in touch with our feelings and to know how they truly feel. Am I feeling um, a satisfaction that actually has an anxiety running under it? Or am I truly feeling joyful and at peace? Am I feeling superior because I eat an apple while I see somebody over there eating a Big Mac? Um, and is that really joy? So doesn't matter so much what we're doing in the physical. It matters very much how we feel. And it matters very much how the energetics of any situation feel to us. Not just our personal emotions, um, which are an indicator of our instability. We can feel ourselves moving back and forth, being pushed here and there. We can see if we're abiding in peace or choosing to exist in, in, in an illusory realm that appears to be outside of peace, but is really encompassed by peace all the time. So when we notice ourselves in these states of disturbance, remembering that we're encompassed by peace all the time because we're much bigger than what we think we are. And we're always encompassed by, surrounded by what we actually are, which is love, peace, joy, all, all the best feeling stuff. And everybody has equal access to that. Everybody is equally worthy of that in every moment. So <laughs> when we find ourselves being completely absorbed by the physical, those are often the moments when we are making judgments, um, feeling very disturbed, and that is simply an indicator 
it is not reason to blame Donald Trump or pick your person. You know, if, if he's not your person, pick your person. It's not your reason. Um, it's, it's your gift and your chance to realize this is my indicator that I am very strongly absorbed in the physical. That has, it's an indicator of the past. What is happening in the physical right now is the result of the thoughts and beliefs that we've given our attention to previously. Um, so we're experiencing the past in a sense. We can view what we're experiencing right now as neutral. It's not an indicator of what a good person am I or what a good person is somebody else. It's not an indicator of what a horrible person am I or what a horrible person is somebody else. And when we're fixated on um, somebody else as being the better or the worst person, we're just hiding out from our sense and our fear that we're the better or the worst person. Even when we feel like we're the better person, there's an anxiety even there because we, we know our home is in equality. It's in equality, not inequality. <laughs> we exist in a true equality. That's the truth of us. So even when we're kind of convinced that we're the better person, there's an anxiety even there if you feel into it because it doesn't feel right to be the better person. It doesn't feel right to have something that somebody else wouldn't have access to, to. Because in another situation, with time and change, things keep shifting and changing, um, then you're going to be, be the one left without access to that. That's how the mind works when it works in conflict in this back and forth. And it's always afraid of the opposite coming to get it because we chose to um, enter this realm of opposites and try to honor one and condemn the other. And what we are is not, it's, it doesn't come from the world of opposites. It comes from the world of wholeness. So when we remember that we are whole and we return to that whole, even W-H-O-L-E, <laughs> even though we are definitely here in, in the world of opposites where there's all this stuff going on, um, if we meet it with love and with recognition that it is only a sign of what we've been wanting in the past, have we been wanting conflicted will or har harmonic will, um, and if we realize that every situation we're in is for us and we're responsible for it, then we tune into the energetic level. And it does not matter what's happening in the physical. When you tune into the energetic level and you remember to keep doing that, and you don't allow what's happening in the physical to determine your next action, um, we can live whole lives and um, many years of a life reacting to what has happened in the physical, which is just an indicator of how we were thinking and believing before, and trying to find an answer or um, a push off point, a, a, pu a point of resistance from the physical to change the physical. So we can play this back and forth game of over and over and over again trying to get from good to bad or, or from bad to good or um, trying to make things go our way, trying to go back and forth between these opposites because that's all we see here is, is the opposites. If we don't look deeper, if we don't access the, the energetic level. So <laughs> if, when we catch ourselves during the day, being absorbed in the physical and thinking that the physical is caused by the physical. I know this is crazy talk. If this is how you've always believed the physical works. If you have a problem in the physical and I mean, it doesn't mean that if, if I want to learn how to fix something in my house and won't go to YouTube and learn how to fix it. And, um, you know, it doesn't mean that I don't perform acts in the physical or I don't feel inspired to do things in the physical. I, I do, but it's not primary. It's simply flowing from the energy of all that is when I have my head on straight. <laughs> um, but when I'm really struggling 
in judging and, and condemning and deciding something's this and the other's that, and I've got to be over here and I can't be over there. And that energy of struggle and conflict, um, then I know that I am trying to move through the physical, through total reliance on the physical, and it just feels wrong. It's always felt wrong, but what we were taught to do is when the frustration of relying on the physical to determine our next actions in the physical, um, when that frustration got to us, we learned to blame or withdraw, to make ourselves small, maybe to obey or please people, um, and simultaneously to blame others, to feel victimized. Um, we learned to lash out in aggression. If we didn't dare to lash out in aggression in the physical, it's just a clear indicator of where our minds were. That's, that's what aggression is. It's a clear indicator of where our minds are. And what the other guy's doing is always a reflection of what you've had going on too. Um, so if we didn't dare to express that physically, um, we probably expressed it in our thoughts and um, thoughts of you know feeling sorry for ourselves or showing up as the victim for that aggressor in, in partnership because we didn't know. We didn't know better. We didn't know um, that the energetic level existed. I don't want to say that because people never completely lose that. I mean, that's, that's what powers us. Love powers us. That's why the body is so alive. So when I say we didn't know or we didn't refer to the energetic level, I'm lying because we do. We do refer to the energetic level throughout the day. But what we don't recognize is that it's primary. It's primary. And so when we start to remember every time I experience a disturbance, I'm going to refer to the energetics of this. I'm going to go back to the peace within me. I'm going to allow the next actions to flow from that. And the interesting thing is I don't know what the actions are going to be yet. When we have um, pre-formulated paths of action, that comes from fear. That comes from fear that we won't know what to do or what to say. And um, those, those fears are pretty deeply ingrained. So it's an interesting journey of trust to keep referring back to the energetic with no game plan, except for that, except I know the love and peace that I am in this moment, and I know that's the other guy too. So I'm going to refer back to that in this moment of tension, no matter how small, and allow the next things that happen to come from that. And that is very interesting because you don't know. <laughs> You're walking around in, in ignorance, in a sense. Um, it doesn't mean that you don't get the opportunity to use your intellect. You do. And it's fun. But it's in service to something that seems much bigger than you. And it only seems much bigger than you because you have not recognized yet, or maybe you have, but talking about this working through the conflicts thing, how it feels. We have not recognized yet that it is ourselves. So every moment I have like a point of tension or disturbance during the day, um, and I go back into the wholeness that I am, it's always a, a re-recognition. It's like, you know, like I fall asleep and I wake up and I fall asleep and I wake up about a thousand times a day. Um, it's always recognizing seeing again um, that this peace and love that encompass, encompasses me is me. But it's so easy to just be walking around as the body, communicating through the body, and to really believe, well, that's, that's just me, and I'm subject to, and, I'm, and what I am is not prior to anything. I'm just being kind of blown about on this ocean here. Um, but when we keep referring to the, the peace and love we are with the knowledge that that is who the other guy is too, whenever we feel the least bit tense or confused, that's our substitute for blame. Because blame just enmeshes us further in this um, back and forth conflict and confusion about who we are. So. We have as many opportunities a day as we need to, to remember that I am feeling tense or conflicted or confused in this moment. I'm going to refer back to the energetic level, 
not, I'm not going to try to find my answers in the physical at this point, you know, unless your toilet is overflowing or something like that, then you'll probably just know what to do. And that's why emergencies happen sometimes because we just, we just know what to do um, because we have no other choice, kind of. We, we energetically search for and find that, hmm, what do I want to say, that channel, that, like, that radio frequency that just tells us what to do, and we do it. So um, it can be like that all the time, that you just know what to do, and you don't have to analyze or judge or condemn or decide what's inferior or superior or decide what ideal you're going to chase after next or um, spend time. I've done this. This is why I'm smiling because I'm remembering the years of my life <laughs> that I did this. Decide who's fitting to the, into that ideal and who's not and maybe how the ones who are not fitting into that ideal are, are going to come to a bad end in some way. And the ones who do recognize the worth of this ideal and are following it are going to come to a, they're going to enjoy some kind of wonderful existence, but maybe you follow the idea a little better than they do. It's these just very silly um, back and forth mind games. If you watch the, the critical thoughts, they, they turn into a comedy after a while. So we don't need the ideals. We don't need the blame. Um, but what is always there for us is the energetic level. And when I talk about the energetic level, I'm, I'm talking about um, non-physical beings who are always surrounding us. Um, it's like we're here on the earth plane and we made the decision for conflicted consciousness um, to feel a sense of. It's like we chose hell in a way. Like, I want to go through my life with an unrelenting sense of conflict. Woo, here we go. Um, so kind of like that. So the non-physical beings look at us on this level and they recognize that we're experiencing a lot of density, a lot of conflict, a lot of confusion, and they want very much to help us. They aren't freaking out about it for the most part. They are flowing with divine will, harmonic, um, representing what we can do too, right here, right now, although it's a little more challenging. But they really enjoy helping us. And what they can help us do is see through all the dense energetics that we experience on the earth plane. And all we have to do is ask. So you could um, have a mantra, anything that speaks of the truth to you. Um, I, one of my favorites that was suggested to me is a little help here. Like you realize, oh, I'm, I'm insane right now because I'm referring to the physical level to try to fix the physical level when actually that keeps me caught in the same confusion I've always been in. So, you know, if I say a little help here, then the ideas and thoughts and um, eventually feelings um, will come to me because the non-physical beings around us are helping us release the perceptions we don't need. Um, and it's kind of like they help us see things clearly. We decide to snip a tie, an, an energetic tie to conflict. And once we do that, they can take it away. They're like garbage people. What a wonderful service that is. I mean, if you just think about that, even in the physical, the energetic, it is a very, very important and beautiful role. So we have to snip it, though. It's like we have to put the garbage out on the curb. They can help us see what's going on in any situation. Um, and, and they can help create the conditions where we're able to snip that energetic tie, that attachment to conflict, that attachment to superiority or inferiority, criticism of self, criticism of others, um, kind of a panicky fix it response, all of that stuff. They can help us see that, oh, it's safe to do this now. We get out our scissors and we snip it. And then they can take it away. They, when they take away that attachment to conflict, um, then new experiences and ideas are allowed to flow in. And it's much easier for us 
to remain aware of that energetic connection and potential on a moment by moment basis. So like with anything, um, the more you do it, the easier it gets. The more you do it, the more you remember to do it. And then it becomes pretty amazing how we begin to regard the physical. The physical is the result. The physical is the reflection. So I don't have to tangle with and fight the physical. This doesn't mean I don't take action. Like if my van door is stuck and I don't know how to open it, I'm I'm not, I'm not at the point yet where I'm going to sit there and just go, oh, and it's going to open. I don't have that belief system yet. I'm saying yet because we can we can allow anything to come into being, anything at all. So if collectively, you know, 20 years we're going to decide to do that for ourselves, we could. And anything is possible in the physical. It's all dependent on our thoughts and beliefs. So I'm not denying that that is a possibility if you look at monks who have put a lot of time and energy into transcending the physical limits. You can see what is possible. Um, but I will not just refer to the physical to fix the physical. And I will refer to the whole to help me get through the thing without losing my shit. <laughs> um, for, for those of us who are not monks, who have not figured out how to, how to transcend the physical, that energy is always there for us and that's the most helpful thing to know that it surrounds you all the time you're never cut off from it and it is you and it is everybody else and it's what fills in the space between all the separate things we think we see and experience it fills in every gap it fills in every gap between superior and inferior it fills in every gap between sickness and health it fills in every gap between all the opposites so there's nowhere where this energy of the whole does not permeate and that's why it's so accessible all the time we only have to remember to refer to it so here's to a day of remembering um, all the gifts that are available to us all the time <laughs> and i hope you have a good one